Hello Bampton fans and welcome to test number 728. This is the Li Ning Tectonic 7 Drive Badminton Racket Review. So who are we and what do we do? We test badminton equipment like strings, shuttlecocks, shoes and of course lots of rackets. Over 750 in actual fact. Rackets tested on our site in the, and in great detail. Detail like you've never seen before. If you go to our website and go onto the year zone, you can sign in and see all this information for free. You can also advertise your club for free, and you can also advertise any forthcoming tournaments for free. We do ask of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our website, press the like button, and if you can afford it, please do donate whatever you can so we can keep our work going forward. Thank you. This racket is £140, we sell it, it's hard to get hold of in Europe, uh, it, is, it is available in many parts of Asia, we don't know exactly where, but in Asia at this point in time the growth of badminton retail is, is still happening and websites are still being developed but we don't have links to people who we know sell the racket so it's very difficult for us at this point to point you in another direction. The specs on this racket, <coughs> let's just change the screen. Always a lot going on with screens. It's slightly lighter, I remember, than the 7 Tectronic 7, that's correct. So the Tectronic 7 weighed in at 84.1 grams. This weighs in at 81.1 according to the manufacturer. The weight is balanced slightly head heavier than the Tectronic 7, which is 295. This is 304 towards the head. It, it has a stiff shaft. We do not have the grip size. We know the maximum string, string tension, 32 pounds. Uh, are made in China as are all leaning products. The E-Zone testing on this racket weight 84.8 grams. Balance point head heavy at 311 mil going towards the head of the racket and it is a medium flex shaft not super stiff not too flexible. In terms of the design, well, it's very, very similar with small sweet tweaks to the Tectonic 7. Um, it's not wow in terms of colour and, you know, an array of colours that hit you and you think, oh my God, the detailing that you get on a Kawasaki. It's not like that. But whatever they've done here, it's done very professionally. It's understated in its design, similarly to an Astrox racket. It's not, it's not over-designed. It's quite simplistic, but it's executed very, very beautifully. Take a look at these close-ups and see what you think for yourself. So how does this racket perform? Well, it's a medium light uh, weight racket in terms of use. You don't feel it's heavy or light. It feels absolutely perfect, I think. Um, it feels more flexible in actual use. It does have sort of sling effect, but unlike very flexible rackets, but when you're trying to line up for your smash, you don't, some very flexible rackets, it's hard to get the slingshot timing right. When the racket's flexing back and then flexing forward, that timing, can be difficult and sometimes you don't always get the full impact on the shuttle. Well, this has the right amount of flex and you do get reasonably good impact on the shuttle. In terms of its airspeed, we've got it listed as average. I'm going to ask that to be reconsidered. I actually think it feels fast in the air. It does not feel average speed in the air. In terms of its overall performance, overhead shots, amazing. Forehand, backhand, really easy. Easy punches, good. Uh, the input from player to the shuttle flight is really good. It's in, in the player's ratio. Um, in terms of its... I'm just going to switch screen so I've got all the little details I need. In terms of the uh, defensive capabilities, in terms of its drive capability, getting into a drive rally with this racket, superb defensive you get behind the shuttle really easily. You feel like you have extra time uh, in defense. So really, really good. Uh, control levels are high, you have a very good understanding where the racket is at all times. You know how much weight to put onto the racket as you're playing it. The smash is not massive, but I'm not going to put that as, an, uh, as a negative point. It's just not huge. It's a good smash, it's reasonable, it's respectable, but it's not quite like the Black Panther 4U, for example, or even the Altius 03 Control, who does, they do have that little bit extra power.
So just before we go on to concluding that, if you're wondering how it compares to the Tectonic 7, I would say this 7 drive is an easier racket to use than that. It lets off a little bit more repulsion than that one does. Um, and But the Tectonic 7, just looking at this sheet here, Again, it doesn't have, um, I mean, to be honest with you, the Tectonic 7 drive just does everything that little bit better. The Tectonic 7, um, according to, if I just quickly go across the E-Zone here, I, I know that the Tectonic 7 is a slightly heavier racket. Uh, and I was just wondering to see if that had a big effect on its overall performance. Right, so the Tectonic 7 has a slightly better smash power than the Tectonic 7 drive. Uh, the its defensive capabilities where so you know this we see this a lot with these little tweaks that the manufacturers make so the tectonic 7 while it's more aggressive in its overhead shots it's not quite as agile don't get me wrong it's super amazing racket the tectonic 7 it scored huge again in the e zone testing but it's not quite as good on the defensive and drive scenarios as the tectonic 7 drive so it really is depend on which racket on what style you play as to which racket you might choose. If you're a more aggressive player, you know, it's a slightly heavier racket than the Tectonic 7 drive, then, then the Tectonic 7 might be better for the more hair hardcore people who want the heavier racket. You know, the balance point, again, I think the balance point is actually quite, yeah, it's a slightly, slightly lower, but very similar balance point, but slightly more weight on that Tectonic 7. The Tectonic 7 drive, a little bit lighter, slightly more head heavy, but it's just a bit more nimble. Um, but you do drop a little bit of smash power. Both are very good. Tectronic 7 has the edge in terms of smash. The Tectronic 7 drive has the edge in almost everything else. How does that leave us overall with this racket? Control is really good. As I said to you, it's all amazing. This racket scored a 94 out of 100 in the E-Zone testing. Wow. That's wow. Makes us nervous as the testers to give that score. The expectations are going to be crazy, so it's very important you understand it will do everything very, very well, but your smash power will need to be worked on. Okay, I, I, not a negative point. It's still going to be a tick on the smash, but it's just not huge. That's all I'm saying. Now, beginners. Beginners tend to work better with heavier rackets. Why? Because they're not yet rotating. They're not using their body. They're not yet, you know, the elbow and the wrist timing is not perfect yet that timing that's needed so they rely on the weight of the racket to get flight from the shot and as you if you're a beginner that's starting to get the basics of you know movement then i think that you should consider the tectonic 7 drive i think that the um an intermediate player should 100 percent consider the tectonic 7 drive a advanced and professional players you need to try this racket it's really really good how often do we recommend a 140 pound racket very very rarely this racket is something unique the tectonic 7 also is something unique now the caliber 900i the leaning one that we tested in 2019 i think it was that racket is also great but that felt a lot more like a mizuno jpx very sturdy very accurate and felt very professional uh, this is a different beast to that it's lighter it's faster it's more nimble it's quick so that's the kind of differences we're talking about. What does it compare to? And could you get this experience cheaper? Yes, you could. You can get a very close experience to this Tectonic 7 in the Abros Venom or Hammerhead, but they are not as stable as this. I don't think they're as accurate as this, and I don't think their control levels are quite going to match that of the Tectonic 7 drive. So it really does depend on your level of play as to which racket you would choose. There is not a lot else in this price bracket that plays like this racket. The, you know, the Victor Aura Speed 90S, which is also quite expensive, the, the Victor Drive rackets that we've tried recently in this test session, the video will be released shortly. They're great, but this is different to them. It's lighter, it feels lighter, it feels quicker in the air. Everything about it is speed, 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 but it's also got the accuracy and enough power to put pressure on the opponents. I honestly think it's worth a try, especially for you leaning fans who love it. So if you want to see the smash shot, the maneuver shot, all the specs on this racket and many, many more, over 750 now on the E-Zone, you can go across there, sign in, it's free of charge to access and it will be really, really helpful if you're looking to compare rackets and performance. Don't forget, if you're viewing the E-Zone, it works a lot better on a mobile phone and, uh, sorry, the other way around, it works a lot better on a laptop or on a desktop as opposed 
to a mobile phone. It's just a lot of information to fit on a small screen at this stage. Also, you can, you can advertise your club tournaments for free on the eZone. And don't forget, if you're looking for string test results that we've done, if you're looking for shuttle test results that we've done, if you're looking for other rackets, then go to our playlist and you can find a whole ream or just do a search in our playlist and you'll find a whole list of stuff that we've done. We've tested a lot of rackets that we put YouTube videos up on. The YouTube videos keep changing year by year, uh, hopefully getting better, but nevertheless, they are all there. Just go to the playlist. Outside of that, don't forget that eZone is your platform, the Badminton community's platform. This channel belongs to you. Everything we do belongs to you guys. It's all for the Badminton community. So please do your part. Advertise your club. Let's get Badminton back on its feet. It's been absolutely dire in 2020. We want to help and we want to make sure that Badminton recovers and gets, comes back even stronger. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the shares. Don't stop. Keep subscribing. Keep liking. Keep your support going. We feel the love, we appreciate the love, and the love is coming back to you guys. I hope you feel the vibes. Thank you for tuning into this video, and we will see you next time around.